sponsors the TAC Wipe Off 5 or Wipe Out Live. Primus Telecom. Amy, lucky you're with Amy. The Beer Behind Footy. 4 and 20, the great Australian taste. And Toyota, oh what a feeling. Long he is building a football club. Fremantle took a giant step towards success last year. But as the Dockers quickly found out, getting to the finals is one thing, making the September grade is another. A match hardened side, a finals experienced team really, really um, blew us out of the water basically. I think that was one of the, you know, the great games of, of our sort of last two or three years was to go over there, you know, against the odds and, and win the game. And there it is. Essendon advanced to the second week of the finals. I couldn't believe it, it was over. It, it, it sort of was like um, you'd got to your birthday party, everyone was there for your birthday party, and then five minutes later they left. There's no bigger stage than the Telstra Dome tonight for the Dockers to show the football world they mean business. You could have 15 playing 16th, round 22, and everyone's lined up Friday night to watch the footy. And that's a part of it. And we, we haven't had that opportunity. A big round 10 clash awaits. And you'll have the best seats in the house as Sky Camp takes you right into the action. It's Essendon versus Fremantle on Nines Friday Night Football. Good evening everybody and welcome to the Telstra Dome and in nearly 50 years of coverage of the great game of Australian rules football never before have you at home been so close to the action as you will be tonight as Toyota introduces Skycam to Nine's wide world of sports on Friday Night Football. It's Essendon versus Fremantle, a great game like you've never seen it before. Gary, this has just got something extra this game, and we haven't even started. I know, I've got to keep reminding myself, there is a great game of footy. I've been out here watching this thing for the past 24 hours. It is amazing, and here it'll give uh, our viewing audience at home a look at footy that they've never had before. It adds a total new dimension to it. And one thing for sure, do not get reported. Don't hit anybody tonight, because there's cameras everywhere. Gary, leaving aside the technology tonight, we've got a ripping game on our hands. Oh, absolutely. You've just got to have a look at the ladder positions here between these two teams. I mean, they're both pushing for a top four spot. It is competitive for Fremantle. Tonight's a night they've got to make a stand and announce that they're serious about getting in the top four. Who better to do it against than a team that have been there for such a long time? Absolutely. Well, let's find out more about these two big teams coming out tonight for Round 10 action. Let's go to Dennis Cometti and Dermot Brereton. Good evening, fellas. Yeah, good evening, Ed. Thank you. I keep wanting to look up, Dermot. <laughs> it's an amazing night, isn't it? Both these teams want to head up the ladder. Absolutely. Well, you look at the moment, fifth and sixth and the Fremantle Dockers, well, they've had some not so credible losses. Essendon have six wins and well look you could just about call it a credible loss last week Frio though uh, winning against the reigning premiers last week that must make them buoyant yep the margin 59 points they come in tonight with a record of six and three acknowledging the camera if you don't mind on the banner <laughs> that's got to be a first so out come the dockers big stage tonight and there's our friend just lurking above them. Oh, that is fantastic, isn't it? A totally different perspective to look at them. Let's have a look at the way that uh, Chris Connolly has chosen his team. Pretty balanced. You look down the spine, Hadrill. Now, I reckon he is the most underrated player in the comp. McFarlane, Hazelby, mm -hmm. Polak, good kid. Pavlich named at full forward. Probably play at centre-half forward, Dennis. But I really think they've got to get him into the midfield. You think last year in the final, Masiti cut them up. And a player like Masiti has no fear of uh, Fremantle's pace in the midfield. Look at their back half of the ground. McFarlane, I'm a huge rap for this kid. He is the number one contested mark in the comp over the last four or five weeks. They've got to isolate him, take him away from the action zone. So, a big night for those Fremantle Dockers. Here's Gary Lyon with their coach, Chris Connolly. Well, Chris, welcome to Friday Night Footy. It's been a while, around 18, 2000 since you've been here. Oh, it is, and it's a great night for the Fremantle Football Club. And 
the opportunity is to really prove that we're a quality team and we're looking forward to the challenge. It is a big test, isn't it? I mean, people are sitting back and saying, you're a very good side at home. Tonight's a night to make a stand. Oh, it is, it is. It's, you know, we've got an away game. It's going to be full. They've got those things. They're banging non-stop. But we've got to produce quality football in all environments if we're going to take the next step. It'd be nice to be 10 up with a couple of minutes to go to appreciate the SkyCam technology. No, well, it's good to be a part of all that type of stuff, and I'm sure it'll help our coaching once we get our hand on the footage. Good luck, Michael. Thank you. Out come the Bombers. Lake Frio, a record of six and three, but losers last week against the Cats at this venue. The margin there, 23 points. James Hurt, James Hurt is back tonight. Well, he certainly is, and uh, some would argue legitimately, too, that they would have been, well, obviously, it would have been a much bigger show last week against the well-performed Cats. Had they had the skipper out there, he has been brilliant all season while out on the park. Once again, a balanced team. They've had a run of six wins in a row. Very difficult in the AFL to win more than six in a row, although St Kilda would argue that at the moment. Have a look at their balanced team there. I think Bolton, he'll probably have to run around with Pavlich. He's named at centre forward, so they'll, they'll do something there. They've made four changes. Joe Watson, a late withdrawal. Yeah, he, he's been taken out. The doc will uh, be all over that, and he'll let us know what's happened there when we get to him a little bit later. Let's have a look at this team here. They are a long-kicking team. Number one in the comp for kicking the ball long, but they hit targets with it. Now, Justin Murphy... Uh, He's had a tune-up by Kevin Sheedy. He's harder at it this year. He kicks the ball long. Johnson always thumps it long. And James Hurd, well, he finds targets whether he's going 20 metres or 50 metres. And you know what? They are last in the comp over the last five weeks for Clangers as well. They don't turn it over. Well, when you get a team on the road such as Fremantle, they are prone to... Uh, well, falling apart a bit at, on occasions, and the best way to do that is put them under the microscope, under pressure. Those hard boys on screen there will apply the blowtorch early on. And speaking of hard boys, I mean, underestimated is the resilience of this man. Quite remarkable. He was gone for three or four weeks. Suddenly, he's back after a week. Tough. He is genuinely so tough. So, the Bombers looking for their seventh win of the season. Here's their coach, Kevin Sheedy, with Eddie McGuire. Thanks very much, Dennis. Well, the pressure cooker, Kevin, it's a fantastic atmosphere tonight. The sky cam's going. It's all in readiness for a great place. Well, it's different, isn't it? I mean, uh, you never know when the Martians are going to turn up, do you? No place to hide when you were playing. You have been rubbed out for life if this had been going. Well, um, myself and a few others. Chris Conley and yourself really have given this game a bit of an extra lift tonight. It's, it's great for footy. I mean, the both clubs have been at each other over the last sort of couple of years since Chris has been out there and, and uh, turned the club around to, um, you know, very much a force in the AFL. And, and so it should be. I mean, we want to be up there amongst the big, uh, you know, the big sides in the AFL and so to see, so we're, we're hanging there. We're fourth and fifth, well, fifth or sixth at the moment, yeah. so um, it's a pretty critical game for both clubs. And a big milestone match for Matthew Allen, a bloke that you've shown a bit of faith in. Well, Matthew's been a very good player for us uh, this year, I and mean, him and uh, Justin Murphy have been excellent players for us, and um, we hope they can continue that way for the rest of the season because, uh, well, it just gives a lot of confidence in and out of the centre bounce and uh, having another experienced player to look after when you've got Lloyd and Lucas and Hurd and those sort of boards up in the forward along with Rioli. Good on you, Kevin. Enjoy the night and let's hope Hurdy can get through. The sky can doesn't land on his head or something yeah, like that. Well, that um, oh, I won't even mention it. No, OK, mate. Thanks, Kevin. Good luck for the rest of the night. Kevin Sheedy joining us there. Great atmosphere down here, Gary. Ready to go. It's fantastic, Ed. We're usually at the box at this time. I reckon I'd be rather down here. It is a fantastic atmosphere. The crowd's filling up. Chris Connolly was confident. I'm sure Kevin Sheedy was all in readiness. All right. Well, the crowd's giving us the G out. They're saying, get off and let's start the game. So let's do that. We'll take a break. We'll be back. Friday Night Football. This is AFL on Nine. Welcome back to Friday Night Football. There's the biggest star on Friday Night Football here tonight, the Toyota Skycam, as we get set for the continuation of this Toyota Premiership season 2004. Um, Michelle's going to be doing the, the two captains. Tonight, so here we Michelle, go. When you're ready, and Peter, you call when you're ready. Heads it is. Heads it is. Peter Bell and James Peter. Heard. James Heard wins the toss. I love it. Get a camera on the camera. It's great, isn't it? It's magnificent. It's like uh, it's like it TV, isn't it? Let's get into Tony Jones. Tony. Yeah, good on you, Eddie. Thanks very much. Bit of drama at Windy Hill through the week. Uh, the Fremantle spies were there. Binoculars in hand, perched in a position just outside the ground. When next thing, a uh, car came up, brakes screeching, and out jumped several members of Melbourne's underworld, if you can believe that. They, they had, in fact, mistaken the uh, Fremantle spies as rival gang members. So uh, the Dockers <laughs> come here tonight just a little shaken, Ed. <laughs> good on you, Tony. 
I'd shake anybody up. It's <laughs> that's magnificent. I thought you were going to say Kevin Sheedy, but it might have been a bit worse than that. Let's go down to Dr. Peter Larkins. Here he is, Pete. Yeah, good day, good evening. Well, no, certainly. No looks... gunshot wounds or anything? No, no gunshot wounds. Where? In fact, the club doctor from Essen, Ian Reynolds, has gone home sick. So Essen have lost one off the bench already, but their uh, Bendigo Bombers uh, VFL doctor standing in for him tonight. So, uh, Ed, but of course, James Heard back great. And Fremantle, Joe Watson out with a hamstring for two to three weeks. Fremantle's had the best injury list for the year, so they're travelling pretty well, Ed. It was a bit happening too, boys, down at centre half forward. Big Troy Simmons. And I reckon Dustin Fletcher, that's the man you'd be picking. A black belt, he is. It's about to go on Friday night football. The Bombers against the Sopranos. Opening bounce. <laughs> Rucks go at it. Longmuir knocks it down. Mercedes taken down immediately. Hazelby. Cook through his legs. Pavlich. Ditto. Solomon's in the thick of the action. Down he goes. We're going to get to see a great duel between McFarlane and Lloyd. This will be this will be worth the price of admission alone. And make no mistake, they're going to test Freo. That is a suspicion that they're a touch soft in the underbelly. Longmuir in trouble. Gets boots a ball. Peveril in space. Kicks it down towards half. Or James Hurd back in the action. Missed it. Johnson goes after it again. Somehow controlled it. Lucas tackled and taken down by Gilmore. Pavlich. Hadrill, now Carr across half back, hoisted very high, Farmer in from the side, loose ball at the back, coming up to mid at McManus, Peveril was waiting for him, Farmer to Waterhouse, 65 metres out, sends it long down towards full forward, loose ball at the back of the pack, Hayden, still Hayden, oh. still Hayden, oh. goal! How good were the skills? How good were the skills of Roger Hayden? I'm not sure that he scored too many goals so far this season. Just two. Two for his career, Gary. Two for his First career. For First for the year. Spends much of the time at the fence. Have a look at this. It's just instinctive for the Aboriginal boys. They just got great ball sense. And it's a, it's a terrific start. Jeff Farmer getting an early kick. There's a lot of physical pressure out there. And the Bombers will be going after him. McVeigh's gone to Midhurst. Plenty of attention there. McFlair, McManus in the forward line for Frio. It's going to be a good, good tussle. Hayden. It was like Hayden Button, the way he was dancing around there. Magnificent stuff, and Fremantle on the board. Up goes Allen. Gets the tap, but it's Pavlich who gets it out to, ha to uh, Hadrill. Hadrill's kicked the centre-half forward, but Fletcher up high from behind Fletcher takes the mark. That centre-half back for the Bombers. Graham Pollack hands it back. First time for Friday Night Football for the Fremantle Dockers. As the ball comes out to McVeigh. Bolton. He's a long way up, McVeigh. He's effectively full back and he got the ball on the wing then. Spoken Joe Masiti. Can't go long. Can't go long. They've bottled it up, the Dockers. Goes short. A hanger of bombers, one of them. There's James Hurd, a thumping kick. Welcome back, James Hurd. No, just offline. And through for a point. Welsh has got the job on Farmer. Carr has got the job on James Hurd. So that is a big ask. At least Carr could go with him in the midfield and also forward. Dermot's mentioned Lloyd and McFarlane. Lucas has got Hadrill for company. Knockers by five points. Parker kicks off. Hurd over the top of Gilmore. 60 minutes out from goal. Wants to move it quickly. Now some hesitation. Sends it long in the Lloyd direction. Oh, great mark. Wonderful effort. Just checked his opponent, didn't he? He stopped about a metre and a half, short of where the ball was going to be intercepted. Keeps McFarlane away from it. Lloyd and McFarlane 1-0 for Lloyd. 32 goals for the season. He trails Fraser Gehrig by nine. Only about 20 metres out. A good view here. See uh, the, how effective we are with the sky cam here. Thanks a while. Matthew Lloyd. Position A for him. This put the bombers in front. How's that? They're out there riding this one home. Bombers in front by a point. Matthew Lloyd's kicked 44 goals in his last nine matches against Fremantle. Of course, he could easily have been a Fremantle player, but for some deft 
recruiting by the Bombers in swinging a priority pick to uh, away from the Fremantle Dockers to Essen and they got him the Bombers what a recruit he's turned out to be one of the all-time superstars in there's Lucas as well in the same draft he came to Windy Hill very bountiful one for the Bombers here's Johnson now running through half forward Johnson kicks and misses that's another great deal that uh, we can watch this a fantastic matchup for Mark Johnson and Paul Hazelby going at it in the middle of the ground Hazelby's been in, uh, well, arguably the form player of the competition. We probably don't see enough of him here in the Eastern States, but he's been in good form, so big job for Mark Johnson. Parker once more. Outside the 50, hangs a long time in the air. Long Muir, couldn't hang on. Hadrill, Hazelby from half-back, kicks towards half-board, sliding in, Pollock missed the mark. McPhee, a former docker to Welsh, quickly away. Ravanaskis controlled the bounce cleverly. Johnson released into space. Lucas sent away on his left side, measures the kick, 52 metres out. Good looking effort, just offline. There's a free kick down there. This is really lucky with the Dockers. Where just before Mark Johnson received that, oh, sorry, Scotty Lucas, punch to the uh, chest here, oh, high one on the throat. <laughs> um, there was three Dockers besides McFarlane, totally by themselves inside 50. You only need one. And if you've got three extras in there, it means that Essendon can run the ball close enough to score. A duel at nine. He kicks it out towards the 50. Pavlich was in there. So to Jason Johnson. Now Mark Johnson. Bulldog down by Grover. We'll have a bounce. Solomon starts outside the square, or he has done initially, and then um, Pavlich and he tend to run together. Well, Fremantle are trying to get Grover onto Solomon. The ball up right on the 50 for the Bombers. Allen doing some work there. Longmuir did well. Comes out to Rioli. Quick hands. Got it out quickly to Johnson. Johnson to Lucas. On the left. Ramanaskis wanted it. Now he bends it back, but not enough. It's over the line and out of bounds on the full free kick going the way of Luke McFarlane in the back pocket. Docker's got the first goal of the game, but it's been all bombers since then. But we've only been playing seven minutes. Up goes Lucas. Got his hands to the ball in front of Hadrill. Over the line, out of bounds. Great defensive pressure in the forward half for the bombers. We'll have a throw in at the true half forward flank position out of sight. As you can see from this shot, they leave a lot of room to the right-hand side of the boundary line through. And that's if Essendon clear, they've got clear running space forward. Johnson over the top of it, flicks it out the back. Good football. Running onto the ball was Grover. Got it away. Here's a chance now. Gilmore does it well. Kept his composure. Good football. McFarlane has to do the same. He runs into trouble. Solomon's pressure was enormous. And another rush behind. The no, pressure, no. the blowtorch has been applied. The pressure cooker yeah. has been turned up by the Bombers, Dermot. There it is. Now, look, that, that's... I mean, it's significant, that. It's a moral win there for Essendon. But well done by Luke McFarlane. Didn't panic and just recognised that's a safer option. But there is a moral victory in that for Essendon. Margin three points then. Parker, wider this time with a kick. Allen knocks it forward. Hayden... But the Dockers goal taken down. This is Cook. Cleverly. Hadrill spots a man close to the boundary. Peter Bell having another fine season. Kicks towards half forward. Well, what a kick too. Full chested. Waterhouse came to meet it. He's been picked up by Fletcher. They'd be happy with getting Fletcher away from the goal square. 60 metres out. Sends it long down towards full forward. Yeah. The three showed the judgment. Ugly pack. Bodies everywhere. Lays it off. Welsh runs away. Comes out to right half back. Everill's got it. Hops it high in the air. Allen slips momentarily. As a result, misjudged the footy. Found the bouncing ball though. Well played. Looks towards the middle. Lucas, he's been active. Alongside the centre circle. Sweeping hand pass. Mercini, Ramanaskis runs inside the 50. Can he finish? No, he cannot. Wasteful stuff from the Bombers. Yes, it is, and they're so preoccupied at the moment with Lloyd. They're pushing two and three plays back in front of Lloyd, but then the longer kicking Ramanaskis and also uh, Lucas and Murphy, if he gets his hands on it, well, they uh, just in general play those players. Ball comes out to Hayden. Good kick up the wing. Pavlich slipped. It is a bit greasy down there. Gary, was it? We noticed when we were it was. doing the opening, but Pavlich runs the 55. He looks up and says, I'll kick a goal. They've had two shots for two goals, and the Dockers hit the front. Matthew Pavlich, 10 goals for this season. Dockers by two points. Remarkable view. Allen knocks it down. Johnson. 
Hooks it inside the 50. Well done, Parker. Well done, Hur. Hadrill, first bat, in trouble. Cook lays it off. Parker with some time from half back. Awkward kick pitched in front of Simmons on his knees. Too slick for Farmer. Gilmore. Now Cook into the path of Farmer. And he's away. Runs to the 50. His finishing recently has not been good. And he misses. Didn't compose himself. No. He was running as hard on the last step when he kicked the ball as he was when he initially broke away. Watch this. He's Look how open it is for him to run into their yep. dermot. They're, all the players are playing back, giving their midfielders a chance to run through the centre-half forward area and take a long shot, a la Pavlich, the previous goal, and that one should have been a goal. Beautiful insight into what the players pretty much see, obviously from a high vantage point, but looking down the ground, Palmer should have nailed it. Smoke and Joe tight on the boundary line. That's a beautiful kick around the body. Mark Johnson. On half-back flank, looks up, kicks to Jason Johnson. Needed to be a good kick, it was. At half-forward flank, they're running through the middle now. Murphy at centre half-forward is ignored. The kick is to Hurd. It was an ordinary kick. Hurd keeps it in. Now it's over the line and out of bounds. We'll have a throw in 40 metres out from the Essendon goal. Dockers by three points. We've been playing coming up to 12 minutes with 13 left on the clock. We throw in shot from the Toyota Skycam. Tossed in. Longmuir knocks it down in front. Allen to Rioli across the body. It pitches about 25 metres out from goal. Hayden beat one, then the second. Bit lucky, well played. Jackie Chan odds, three against one. He beat them. McFarlane comes away, kicks it down towards half forward. Pavlich from behind. Well done by Fletcher. Got a first on it. Knocked towards the boundary line by Farmer. Didn't go out. Bolton kept it alive. Three on two. McPhee, the look away hand pass. Bolton, Welsh. And now McPhee again. Off the ball, a free kick to Murphy. Advantage is paid. The short one is on. Oh, brilliant grab. Wonderful courage, Johnson. Jason Johnson, penetrating kick inside the 50. Lloyd was up. He was pushed in the back, according to the umpire. And he's going to get the free kick. Well, it'll be interesting to have a look at it. You'd love him from a full forward if you can get that one. Yeah, I think it was there. Luke McFarlane, just a head down there. Yeah. Did push forward momentum into Matthew Lloyd, so he'll make them pay, you would imagine. Beautiful kick for goal. It's a soft one. He did push them for. He did. He did he, the fact that he got under eye level into his back. Didn't ever get his hands up or anything, that no, did he? I, I don't wasn't think he was running con... under it anyway. It wasn't in the contest. And as long as they're consistent with that on that type of adjudication for the rest of the night, you wear it. Yeah, and his confidence, his confidence, he wouldn't say it's been down, but he hasn't been kicking the big bag. So to have two inside ten minutes or so would be a lovely start for Lloydie. Best effort against Fremantle, nine. Round 18, 2000. At this ground, he's got two in the early going. Bombers back in front by three points. Have a look at that for a stat, boys. 13% of Essendon's total goals this season have come from free kicks. That is the best result of any side in the competition. 13% from free kicks. Good if you can get them. Absolutely. Means you're getting to the front if you're a forward. Yeah. Or something like that, anyway. At the back goes Mercedes. McManus over the top. Big 10 minutes or so coming up for the, for the uh, Fremantle Dockers here. They've had a couple of chances, they've looked flashy, but Essendon have dominated the hard football at the moment. Pretty much in the centre of Telstra Dome, at the back it goes. Lucas was pushed off it by Farmer, Longmuir in there as well. It's like a scrum in there at the moment. Solomon, the boy from Broken Hill, might have played a bit of rugby league in his day. Got it out the back, but it's been marked now by Hadrill. Hadrill's handball, didn't have enough on it. Heard was there, good play though by Carr. Bit of panic as Parker goes around the body. Now for the Fremantle Dockers. Gilmore looks up. Not much on. No one leading from the 50 at all. So he has to go short. Grover. Back to Gilmore. You kick it, this kid. High up and under. That's Hard one to mark. That's got hang time. McPhee. Well, he's the only way to win for him, isn't he? Just confidence with Adam McPhee. He's in the career best four. Against his old side tonight, Fletcher out wide to Allen. Game 150. Rioli. Now the chance is on as Welsh runs forward. Waterhouse closes. 
Well, Rioli will run off him here. Oh, they approach on him, his teammates. Now, again, Dermot, a lot of the three Fremantle players have pushed back 30 metres out, and they almost concede around the 50 metre line. Now, we saw Lucas have a shot from 50. We saw Hurd have a, lot, a shot from 50. And now Ramanaskis, they've got some long kicking footballers. I just don't think Fremantle defenders can concede them that much room. He's Ramanaskis. a chance over this distance, Raman. Absolutely, a thumping kick. Three goals, four for the season. This one won't be near it, though. It's short, but up goes Lloyd. He got two hands to it, couldn't quite hang on to it. Thumped over the line by Handrell for a rush behind, and Essendon lead now by four points. 2 5 17 plays, 2 1 13. We played 16 and a half into the first term. Ten minutes left on the clock. Yeah, it's a big couple of minutes now. Essendon do seem to have players running into space. And, uh, well, two goals, five. They've had seven shots at goal to three. Well, three uh, touch lucky to be in touch here at four points. Yep. Science not good for the Dockers. Oh, Hurd. Wonderful. Plays on towards the middle. That was ambitious. Off hands. Wellman. Oh, get a full right. kick. It was clumsy by McManus. Well, I don't know whether really you do your fullback kick ins in the general vicinity of the best player in the competition, but and no. if you do, you've got to get a better contest. And um, everybody should train in a darkened room <laughs> with an Xbox. Amazing. Just comes back, hasn't been away, apparently. Wellman lays yeah. it off Lucas, and slack. Lucas goes long with the kick, it's off target. Mm. Mm. Got, to do bad, huh? got to do your homework, Dan. You've got to do your homework on the opposition. And uh, Nothing you can do about that. If they're setting up eight or nine men playing a zone football rather than opponent-type football and they're inside 50, they're going to be free blows yeah, like that. That's why you've got to do your homework. Don't eight. zone off on Scott Lucas. Dennis eight scoring shots to three, and it's only a five-point game. Bombers have let them off the hook a bit here in this first turn. If you take that, Parker kicks off. In from the side this time, it's Lucas. Sends a deja vu, wants to go, tips it in short. Pebrol, 40 metres out from goal. Can he finish? <laughs> well, no, kicks he six, six behinds, Dennis, and five of the kick-ins have gone to that half-back flank, and every one of them mm. has been turned back. They've taken 20 marks already, the Bombers. Uh, Freo have taken six, so that's a worrying statistic. Yet the one time they kick out this side, they've scored a goal from it. And big contested marks as well. We're going to have another crack here. They miss Carr, Pebrol. Back to Hurd. Hurd decides to go it alone. He lines up from the 50. It's a helicopter kick and Bell couldn't get there. The skipper gets the goal. They needed a taller man. James Hurd gets the goal. Peter Bell. I think I can. I think I can. Watch it again. It's coming in. So is he. I can't. Well, he, he looks after all the things that he can control, Peter Bell. And Neither that isn't the, one of them. <laughs> Neither the trampoline. What about Heard though? Just walk straight back in and uh, five possessions. Back in the middle. Allen knocked it down. Longmuir claimed. Easy, and the ball doesn't easy. come out. The margin 12 points. It could be a heck of a lot more. The Bombers have done all the attacking. Most impressive apart from their finishing. They're marking around the ground. So good. Solomon charges in. Hazelby couldn't control it. Hadrill put the body in. And they tie it up yet again. Another ball up. Only two of uh, the Fremantle Dockers' seven kick-ins have made it to the forward 50. Mm. So uh, one of them a goal, of course, yep. to Pavlich. But other than that, it's been straight back in. Bonmuir right gets the tap. This is Gilmore. Well oh, side pump. Should tackle there. McPhee's. Oh. We'll have a go, though, McPhee. He'll have a second go, but he gives up the free kick. And Hayes will be the take it for in the back. Now they're crowding Medhurst now. He's in form and he's got McVeigh, who is a novice fullback, really, when you look at it. But they've crowded him now. Hazelby decides to kick to the hotspots. A good kick too. Up goes Waterhouse. Good effort. Courage coming in was from Mercedes. Good play. Solomon over the top to Bolton. Wellman handballs through to Welsh. Good football to Pebble. Had to momentarily stop, but it was good enough to lay it off to Allen. Keeping running was Welsh. And now he's got the wide open space. He can go for home. He decides to go wider, still looking for Murphy. And Murphy is a beautiful kick for line from 42 metres out. That is just about the best teamwork I've seen this year so far. 
That was, was extraordinarily good. Wave after wave from the back line. Support running. First possession for Justin Murphy. Again on the 50 metre zone. Right now, free men aren't playing one-on-one -on -one footy. It's as simple as that. When they lose possession, there are free men everywhere for the Bombers. That is hard running, but that is also a willingness to involve themselves in a general contest. Murphy comes in. Bends it back beautifully. Here's a magnificent kick. Goal. Three on the truck for Essendon. Murphy gets the goal. Man standing the mark, Jeffrey Farmer. Just watch that pair tonight. They've got a history up in Darwin. Murphy and Farmer. Mercedi gets a hand pass away. Rioli. Had a bounce off the docker. Welsh towards half forward. Lucas takes the mark. Wheels around. Sets it up now for Lloyd. Under the football. McFarlane takes the mark. Used the hands, but legally, says the umpire, who was in perfect position, McFarlane just jabs it to the defensive 50 and Hadrill. The Dockers need to score for their own confidence. This is Gilmore running away from half back. He's playing well. Goes to midfield. Not a good kick, though. Wellman coming back. Couldn't complete the mark. Polak tried to go to Headland. Chopped off by Musidi to Bolton. Goes down to half forward. Jason Johnson. Lucas is on for the short one. Thought about it. Doesn't go. Looks instead to Murphy in the middle, bearing down his clock. Murphy takes the mark. They're just playing off their men, Fremantle. They will not go and stand shoulder to shoulder. There's Murphy then inside the centre square, long down towards full forward. Two dockers up. Grover spilled it, taken down. They've got a problem. McFarlane hits for the boundary line, and that is a good result. A couple of significant stats. Total disposal 71 Essendon to 45. It's a girl on having three good players on the ground. And 17-6 inside 50s. They're getting flogged, Freo. The last 10 minutes we said, well, this will be a big 10 minutes. Well, since we said that, Bombers have kicked three goals and have dominated the play. We've got a chance for another one. It's yeah. picked up by Shammer. Parker running in and out of trouble. Welcome to the big time, Dockers. Thanks, Andrew. Farmer. This is touch. They have problems like this. They get static just about here. They look for a chip kick always. Now go, son. Now go. Farmer to Cook. So the cook can withstand the pressure cooker as he kicks forward and a whistle no it wasn't a whistle on play Medhurst came out couldn't hold the mark now it's Pavlich gives oh. it off to Hazelby he's gonna have to go all the way here Hazelby oh. kicks it up hoping 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 but the Bombers have got back in numbers and McPhee does it well off hands and knees he gets it out to Johnson Johnson now from defense at 50 he kicks at 50 meters straight to Lloyd who's led up from full forward to the wing Peveril keeps running now they go in waves again Solomon's run to the space Rioli lurking Solomon called loud and got it 65 out Dean Solomon for Essendon five minutes it's been a horror seven minutes or so for the Fremantle Dockers the horror continues nearly Wellman couldn't quite pick it up dashing out now McFarlane for the Fremantle Dockers. Into the path of Hazelby, tracks it out towards the wing. He's got support. Two of the best there, Hazelby and Bell combined. Three of the best. Pavlich has got it on the wing. You've got three Essendon players pushing down into Freo forward line here without opponents. So there's nothing now uh, for Pavlich to do but push wide. Walker. Thanks, 75 metres out. There's four of them in the middle on their own, Freo. Pavlich again. It's good hard running this. That Fox, was. Fox, Here's the man who kicked it to Walker. Game. Just outside the 50, Matthew Pavlich. Could have won tonight already. Plays on. Tugs it near side and puts it out of bounds on the foot. Tony Jones. Dennis, uh, Dennis Sean McManus has uh, spent quite a bit of time on the bench. Uh, had quite a lengthy chat with Chris Conley on the phone too when he came off. And I've got to say, didn't look all that happy when he hung up. Ramanaskis at half back. Kicks up the wing. Out comes Hurd. He's going to have to beat two. Gets it on the half volley. Couldn't quite pick it up. Good play by Carr, but look at her. Went a second time. Did it beautifully. Simmons there yeah. to Shammer on the run. Can't pick it up. Oh, Lucas tried to kill him. And then it's gone. Go, 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 Advantage go. and go as the call will come back to it. You don't have to go. The umpire kept saying go, go, go. Polak. And Shammer was Polaxed. Again, three Essendon players deep in defence and one for our player, which is Pavlich. Surrounded now by McPhee, Johnson, Bolton and in the goal square, I think it's Matty Allen. I mean, what can you do? Well, Camera, of course, you... who's probably still sore after Brent Guerra got him a couple of weeks ago. Now Polak to Parker. 
And have a look at the flood, Dermot. What's oh. going on? Well, see, as Gary called it, if you've got that ahead, that means you must have men close around you. Get run from behind, go sideways and go around it. Hadrill sneaks down in the other side of the ground now. Roy Simmons, the big snake, is a thumping kick. He'll have to be. He's 55 out. Right to the line, won't get there. Bombers up in numbers. Ellen there. Farmer tried something miraculous. And Fletcher thought he was playing volleyball. He tipped it over the top. Uh, even then, it was low percentage. You know, he had to kick it 55, 60 metres. And there's three Essendon players. The fact that they dropped the ball was just a misunderstanding. They should have marked it clearly. Murphy. Lloyd on the wing. A score again here. There we go. To centre half forward. Not Plenty of Doc is there though. Rover goes up and claims the mark. Looks across the ground. Hayden, the opening goal of the match, bounces away from half back. Runs sure. through the centre square. Three on, well, three on one. Fletcher knocked it in front. Farmer leads in the race. Welsh is closing. Farmer went to ground. Hazelby over the top. Farmer himself. appears to be hurt. Down goes Pavlich. That could be holding the football. Barry just played, Murphy spears a short one in, Rioli, McPhee caught that, grabbed him by the leg. Advantage is paid, is it? Go, go, go. That's the call of the night. Ramanaskis. Down towards half forward. Solomon's got it. 65 metres out. Solomon pulls it back towards the middle. Johnson. Mark Johnson wheels around, snaps. And he's missed. He's kicked it behind, but gee, they're in total control. They are getting a lesson in playing hard committed one-on-one -on -one footy they're going to make a decision Fremantle whether they're prepared to just stand their ground maybe get five or six forwards that can play a position there's Ooh, farmers injury but uh, really they they love it out wide they love getting it on their own they're going to start winning some hard footy against an opponent Fremantle in the pocket the dunk is away uniform farmers. much like Sorry, to, no, go ahead. Go on, Dennis. I was just about to say, Farmer's come off. It looks like he did he get a stand, stood yeah, on his hand. Yeah, his hand Wilf, was Wilf's trot over his hand. Looked accidental, but gee, there was a few Essendon blokes that yesteryear used to be professionally accidental. I think. Stood on Farmer's hand. I stood on Dennis's line. You're saying about uh, the uniform, Dennis? No, nothing at all, Ed. Okay, we'll come back to that one. I'm looking forward to it. It's <laughs> not that good. Okay, well. Medhurst, by the way, has got a big donut next to his name as far as stats are concerned after nine goals last week. So the small forwards not having any opportunity. Mind you, it's hardly hit the ground up there. The Bombers have got back in numbers. In the meantime, Lloyd leads up again and marks 55 out. And this is just about his range, Matthew Lloyd. The defenders uh, play from behind, give them a shot at it because uh, they like to have some midfield pressure and perhaps have the ball turned over, but the midfield pressure's not there. Five touches, one goal to James Hurd coming back from that serious eye injury. What a return. What a courageous player. One of the greats of all time, James Hurd. In the meantime, his partner in crime with the same descriptions. This man... Matthew Lloyd has kicked two goals tonight already. On the opposite side of the ground, from 53 metres out, he pushes it. Oh, big fly. There's Lovett Murray just on the ground for Hurd. It is dangerous. Johnson has kicked two behinds. Uh, Solomon over the top of it. And by the bounce. It, it's just, it's pretty lazy play when you just hack the ball out of the air as a backman. I mean, if that goes straight to an Essendon player, it's a simple shot at goal. You've got to take the ball in your hands and make a decision. Bill hooks it down. Clock running down to quarter well time. Shammer. It's led to Wellman. His claim from behind. It was a throw. Advantage is paid. Hazelby across to Walker. Time running out. He kicks towards half forward. Pitches outside the 50. Loose ball at the back. Well done, Waterhouse. Created the path for Medhurst. We're down to one second. That's it. I was going to say, uh, the doctors away uniforms look very much like pyjamas, which might explain the last 20 minutes. <laughs> it's quarter time. And Essendon, 4 8 32, lead Fremantle 2 2 14. It could have been a lot more.
One week he can't see out of it. The next one he's winking out of it. He's a sensation. James Heard, no doubt about that. As the Bombers lead 32 to 14 by 18 points. It could have been a lot worse. It's 12 scoring shots to four. And uh, Essendon uh, really playing great pressure football. Let's have a look at the Telestrator with Gary Lyon. Uh, look, I came in with great expectation. I just thought it was a disappointing quarter from Freo. Essendon were fantastic, but they just don't want to play on anyone. Have a look at this. That's three Fremantle players that have zoned back when the ball was still in the 50 metre. Lucas is the man. They have to come to Lucas because the fact of the matter is he can kick from 50 metres. You just can't be dropping into a hole like that when the footy's at halfway mark and uh, expect to win a game of footy. And that has been symptomatic of the whole Fremantle Footy Club. They want to get on their own and get cheap kicks. Dermot Brereton. We'll have a look at the eighth uh, Essendon behinds kicked. Now they set up a zone to the right-hand side of the screen where those have gone. That is Heard and Lucas territory. They've turned around six of those. Only one has stayed up there. The one out to the left, Pavlich scored from. You have a look at that. It's pretty easy to work out, isn't it? The better players in Essendon's zone are to the right-hand side of the field. They go the other way. They exposed Essendon with a, a lack of pace out that wing. Pavlich scored. That's the good news for Essendon. Tony, quickly, some bad news. Yeah, that's right, Eddie. Scott Lucas had his number taken in that quarter for rough play on Byron Shammer. He'll appear on Tuesday night. OK, we'll have a look at that in a few moments' time. We're back in action with Dennis Cometti, the number one caller in the country. Bombers by 18 points, starting the second term. Solomon, free kick, gives it off to Ramanowskis. Heard. Good delivery. 55 metres out. Yeah, that's a beautiful kick. Plays on into the path so of the happen. leading Lloyd. What happened to McFarlane? He was on his knees on the kickoff line. Well, Luke McFarlane is quick from all reports to him. Yeah, they lightning. tell us he's lightning quick. Well, it doesn't matter. He, he can't concede Matthew Lloyd front spot with the way that if there's no pressure in the midfield, have a look at this. He just waltzes down. It's a beautiful kick. Then James Hurd, who's so good with his feet, I mean, you just cannot concede front spot to Matthew Lloyd when there's not as much pressure in the midfield. Well, McFarlane may have been hit by lightning there because he was on his knees, had no chance to get a play on that ball. Didn't see what happened. May have just slipped. Boyd, meantime. That's the contract. 25 metres out, slight angle. Expect him to kick it. Good. And he darts. Three. They hit targets, didn't they? Two beautiful kicks out of the midfield, and neither player kicking the ball was under pressure. Well, there's no pressure on Ramanaskis. Marks out in front, swings onto the right foot, sums it up. Got time to deliver. Yeah, McFarlane not in screen. Something's happened there. I think he might have got wrong foot. He might have got bumped on the he, lead. I've just had a look. He, he definitely slipped over in the okay. change of direction. So this is the report. I'm not, him, not sure there's much in that. That's got Lucas need worry about. Yeah, Byron Shammer going to ground. Reporters are running into his teammates. Right. Okay, the defence has spoken. 24 <laughs> points to difference. Bob to Friday Night Football, the story so far. And welcome to the future of football broadcasting. Toyota Skycam for the opening bounce. Roger Hayden kicked the first goal. It looked like the Dockers have come to play. Matthew Lloyd in fantastic form. He kicked the first two for the Bombers. And James Hurd, welcome back from that eye injury. A beautiful mark and then a goal on the run. The Bombers by 18 points at quarter time. Into the second term, Matthew Lloyd kicked the first two goals. And the Bombers started to pull away. Skycam makes it easy to see whether it's a goal or not. And the Dockers fans, well, they were swearing like Dockers. Not happy. They drive by 54 points to Dockers. Into the third term. Something at last. Clive Waterhouse. Kick two. Simmons. And then Longmuir. The Dockers have kicked four in a row to try by 34 points. But the Bombers through Mercedes. And then Lovett Murray with a controversial goal right on the siren. And the margin was back out to 45 points at three-quarter time. And that's the way we find it. 45 points the difference at three-quarter time. Tony Jones is boundary side. Well, Eddie, I can tell you that Kevin Sheedy came out to that huddle with a menacing look on his face. He was looking for someone. He couldn't find his man initially. And after going through everyone at the huddle, there he is there. He's finally found his man delivering a real bake. And you wouldn't believe who he's delivering it to. James Hurd. You're right, Tone. We don't believe it. 
That might spell bad news for Luke McFarlane. Start of the final term on Friday night football. Off hands, Bullen sends the Bombers towards half forward. Murphy knocks it down to his own advantage, went to ground. Gilmore did pretty well in a tight situation. Pavlich stood up in the tackle, but couldn't get the arms free. As we go down to Dr. Peter Larkins. Yeah, just a pretty impressive Eston bench for this quarter when you've got uh, Rioli, Johnson, Jay, Allen and Ramanaskis sitting on the bench. So only Ramanaskis with a bit of soreness in his back and he got treatment just before three-quarter time. Pavlich knocked it down, stolen by Alvey. High ball inside the 50. Here's James Hurd. Good tackle, got him down, McFarlane. Hurd got it back in, gave it to Lovett Murray who snaps a goal. So he's got two in the space of 45 seconds. Ten minutes apart, work that out. Toyota's biggest event of the year is here, and Toyota means business with the best-selling Corolla, still 19990 with power steering and air. These blokes really do mean business. Bombers have doubled. Fremantle score. They lead by 51 points. 40 seconds in to the final term here at the Telstra Dome. Big 10 goal win for the Bombers tonight. Would just make the coach smile a little bit more, I think. Beautiful mark taken there by Polak. Up he went. He caught a bit of James Hurd, I think. He might have got a little finger in the eye there. He's got, he's got enormous ability, Graham Polak, but he just hasn't been able to impose himself on this game at all. And they are persist, persisting with playing him up forward when he made his mark as a, generally, a centre-half back. Dutcher, Dustin Fletcher. It's not his knees or his elbows. He's just all arms and legs, isn't he? Yeah, he's a beauty. He has, yeah. He's had a very good year, Dustin Fletcher. Oh, he's a fantastic player. No mistake player. about that. He's uh, right at the very top of the tree. One of the uh, greatest father-son combinations, you'd have to say. People, or certainly in line with the Silvanis of our times, of course, the Fletchers. As Polak's kick looks pretty good. He's kicked the goal. Well, now two plays 57, early going final term on Friday Night Football. Literally cold day in Melbourne. Some rain late this afternoon, but beautiful inside the dome. Hazelby, beautiful inside that pack, played it pretty well. Gilmore arches the back, did not get away. Socket off the ground by McManus. He found a target, Simmons. Only 35 metres out directly in front. Now he's kicked one. That came in the previous term. Well done, Hazelby. Was that holding the footy? Well, it just fell to the ground. Essendon a bit unlucky there. By stark contrast, the dock is pretty lucky. Socket off the ground. And onto this man's chest. Troy Simmons. Good kick it. Credit to the Dockers since half time. They've persisted. Too few doing too much. Bends it back nicely. Another one for the Dockers. Kill them out. <laughs> Straight at it again. So the Dockers reduced the margin to 39 points. Back in the centre of the ground, they really have to finish off with the flurry. Look at that pebble just crashing through. Got the handball away, was offloaded. The Bombers were away. Alvey couldn't keep his feet. Missed the target. Now a chance for the Dockers. Hazelby gets the handball working. Gilmore well runs all the way. The kick was a wobbler inside up towards the full forward zone. Here's a chance for Medhurst. Hasn't had many chances. It was a good handball over the top. Around the body goes the kick at Headland. He made a hash of that. Relatively unusual attempt. Horrible, I'd say. Doom, what was wrong with the left boot or even a handball? I think he calculated he only had two steps in there before he's going to be tackled and he's going to end up on the right foot. If he was able to calculate that in that amount of time, he's a genius. But not so the delivery. It was just a shocker. The kick out, marked by Hayden. On centre wing. Waterhouse stops and starts and takes off, pushes away, 55 out, big Clive goes for home, Medhurst has to beat two in the square, and you're not going to do that, McVeigh's had his measure all night, and when your backup is Fletcher, you've pretty much got it stitched up. Again, that's where Troy Simmons has got to get back, and at least make a contest. Mark Johnson and Bullen combine, 
This is Mark Johnson. Got back from Bullham goes to Alvey over the top to Peveril. Alvey has been handy since coming on. Welsh, the defensive side of the wing, goes to Mercedi. Bell read it well, knocked it away. Perhaps should have marked. Solomon left it behind. Mercedi goes out very wide. Hill and Pavlich on a collision course. Gilmore has tried hard, worked off the line of it though. Hill lays it off. Wellman smothered off the boot. Well done, Hayden. Gilmore went to ground when he didn't need to. Gets a hand pass away to Woods though. Well worked. Woods around the outer side towards half forward. Pollack going back with the flight of it. He's got this footy about 80 metres from goal. Comes to Headland. Needs to do better this time. 75 metres out. Puts it long towards full forward. Simmons in position. Hey! Dropped the mark. Bolton gave a contest, and it was the body that jarred the ball out of there. But behind the Fremantle, 102, play 64. Butcher's kick out to McPhee, who's been very good. 38,411 in tonight at the Telstra Dome. A pretty good crowd for the Bombers and Fremantle on Friday Night Football. Hope you're enjoying it at home. Ball on centre wing. Medhurst, good strength. A toe poke to McManus, who's trying to find some space. There was none there. And Purple made sure he was over the line and out of bounds. For a throw in on centre wing. This then, Hadrill, uh, in stark contrast to the first half, was up with Lucas on that lead, was able to work his way to the front and, and affect the spoil. In the first half, particularly, Essendon forwards led Fremantle Docker defenders the ball at nearly every occasion. Hill gets the tap. <laughs> Bell. Clever hit. Knocked it forward. Cook. Hazelby. Over the top to Pavlich, who kept on running. 55 out. He kicks it around the body. A beautiful kick. Oh, man, that should have been a free kick to Hillen. Oh. Umpire said no, and the Bombers are away. Look at this, McPhee. Have to Bullen, and they are sprinting. Bullen looks up. Lloyd wants it. Bullen can go all the way. He's 50 out. 55 out now. Stops, props, kicks to Hurd. And for a young first, uh, second-year player, that's the right thing to do. Kick it to the captain when in doubt. James Hurd on the boundary line. He'll need to go all of 50 metres. In he comes, just inside the 50. James Hurd bends it back, bends it back, oh, bends oh. it back. James Hurd kicks his second of virtuoso display. Fair kick from oh. the boundary line, tucked in. Outside the boundary line in actual fact, then shaped it left to right. Well, Clive could do that then. Probably not. Well, no. not, at, not at the moment. No, he's a good kick, Clive. He's a good kick. Yeah, but I think he might be fighting out of his class there. Simmons goes after the football. Johnson smothered off the boot. Bell, Hazelby, They're advancing by degrees. Walker. And now Headland. One bounce, runs down towards the 50. His kicking hasn't been good. This one could bounce through, though. Now it went the wrong way. But even then, he didn't time it all that well. It was rather flat off the boot. Seems to almost overstride as he kicks the ball. Has been all night tonight. Uh, Desi Heaven, normally a beautiful kick of the footy. Uh, Essendon, on the other hand, have kicked 11 goals won from set shots tonight, which is just an outstanding effort. Might be from lack of practice. There goes Fletcher. Towards the outer side. The mark is taken by McPhee. Plays on, close to the boundary line. Rioli, good hard running. Put away from McManus, chips inside the 50, Lovett Murray's in front, fingertips to it, couldn't hang on. Now James Hurd appeared to be being held, no free kick. Taken high was McManus, he'll get the free kick. Well, James Hurd can't believe it. Whoops. Now come on. McManus comes out of defence, given his role, James was a little untidy there. Here's Hayden, one bounce, through the centre oh, square. Kick. Lovely kick. Good Simmons hands. on the lead, right on the 50. Walker is on. Oh. oh, from the outside of the boot. Will it get there? Yes, it does. Just in the nick of time. Walker's got it. Midhurst comes to the interchange bench. One would suggest maybe for the night, Mark McVeigh's done an outstanding job on him. This is the James Hurd situation. It was a free kick perhaps, or the potential one just a bit earlier than that. James Walker. Will kick from just inside the 50. Right behind him. Yeah, that's a hit. That is a good kick. A beautiful kick. Right 
since half time. Fremantle have done very well inside 50s, 27 to 12. A margin of 37 points. At half time, it was 54 points. So the Dockers winning the second half of the game, which is all the coach could really ask for after they've been blown away by Essendon. Rioli, though, gets it out. Heard was he being held? Special comments. Uh, should have marked the football. Come back to that. McManus out wide. Gilmore made him stretch, but Pavlich was good enough. Pavlich now kicks to the hot spot. They've got, got the numbers here. In they come along here. Oh. Beautiful mark. Yes, so, I hope you're getting paid by the groan tonight, are you? Well, there's a lot of groaning only because uh, you come with such expectations and you feel a bit let down. Mm. And then you see stuff like this. You see Longmuir on a sharp, hard lead with good disposal. Then you see, uh, sorry, Simmons it was initially on that lead. And then you see Longmuir take a couple of pack marks. They were just monstered by Essendon early in the piece. They've only had six scoring shots since half-time, Essendon. Admittedly, five of them have been goals, but still have been beaten through the middle of the ground. And that's what it's like in the pressure cooker, boys. Longmuir comes in and kicks the goal. The pressure's gone off. Yep. Well. And don't forget next Friday night, Friday Night Football, it's Collingwood versus the West Coast Eagles. Should be a great game of footy, that one. Dennis, mm. you can barrack for the Eagles, I'll barrack for the Maggies. What do you reckon? No groaning next week, you'll get in trouble on opposition channels. You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> I think I'm off WA teams after tonight. <laughs> I hope so. 108 play, 77. And that score line is flattering to the Dockers. Bell. Pavlich, Hazelby, Headland. Wobbles one inside the 50. In front was Clive, fisted away by Bolton. Waterhouse from the 40 then. Sends it very high. It floats down towards the kickoff line. Long here almost. Came off his chest. Jason Johnson slides in. Could have been taken high by an errant leg. And was, and he'll get the free kick. A bit lucky. Yeah, it was untidy, wasn't it, from Long here. He just had to stand up. Yep. I didn't expect, I think, Jason Johnson to do what he did, and that was slip and yeah. finish up amongst his legs. Spent a long time on the bench, Jason Johnson, but uh, he has almost been the best man on the ground tonight. Here's Bullen. It's tough when you're a team like Essendon. You find yourself 54 points in front, but that was, I think, conservative in terms of how the game was being played. Mm. They knew they had it won, and then they've got another half to play, but the Dockers could do no more than come out and fight it out and they're doing that there's their skipper Peter Bell one of his quietest games I'd suggest since going back to the Dockers it's a good point Dennis it was 54 points but it was 22 scoring shots to eight yeah you know the game is over both teams do I think there's the Bombers next run for four games we see Hawthorne at the MCG then they've got Brisbane at here at uh, Telstra Dome back to the MCG for the Demons it's a tough one and then the Kangaroos once again at Telstra Dome. That's still in this form, you'd reckon, start almost favoured on nearly Just, all of those occasions. Yeah, yeah. Brisbane month, away from home. Yeah. Big month for the Bombers. It'll be uh, pretty much defining for the top four. Top four, them. yeah. Yep. And a real chance. They're playing good football. Three nine, three nine, one, 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 Jeff Farmer. Ninth possession coming up. Another helicopter coming in. Good luck. Three on one. Wellman gets back. That's been a feature tonight, though. The Bombers have really played for each other, particularly in defence. Bell to Pavlich. Pavlich looks up. Walker, who kicked a goal earlier this quarter, has taken the mark. He wants every centimetre. He knows that anything outside 45 is going to stretch him. And he'll kick from about that mark. And the six foot six man on the mark, so he's got to get a little bit more elevation. And James Walker, grandson of the Coventrys. Well, the Coventry of the. Uh, Sid, I think, mm. rather than Gordon. Sid, Sid Coventry, one of the greatest Collingwood names, if not the greatest of all time. And Walker comes in and makes no mistake and gets his second. James Walker, two goals tonight. Well, it's about now that Kevin Sheedy would be getting very annoyed. The margin is back to 25 oh, points, and the Dockers keep chipping away. Full credit to them. Longmuir won it down. Pavlich has been good. His 22nd possession. Here's Farmer. In front, hand passes to Headland. Some indecision. Now he wheels around, kicks inside the Get 50. It. Another goal here will make it interesting. In front, Simmons had it fisted away by Fletcher. Heard applies a tackle. Pavlich went down, was given a long time. Jason Johnson stumbles. Advantage is paid now. It's coming back. 
Pavlich. That's a good decision on Matty Pavlich. He didn't have prior opportunity, but he didn't fake and make out he was trying to uh, get rid of it when he wasn't. He made a legitimate attempt once he got a little bit of balance. That's a good decision by the umpire. That was the free kick. Yep. As it turned out, it did find the bomber on the outer side, but it was a high ball to a contest, so the umpire did the right thing and pulled it back. Here's Allen. For seven and a half minutes, there is plenty of time to kick the four, the four goals. I mean, the, the trend of this match suggests they wouldn't, but it's amazing they're within 25 points. Hayden goes short. Holak, the runner outside. Bell going down towards left half forward. Looks right. inside the 50, sets it up. Waterhouse. So he's 53 metres out from goal. Walker wants it. He's been dangerous on the forward line. Waterhouse bypasses that long Ooh. towards full forward. Simmons almost. Now McPhee. They've got the numbers to bring it out, isn't it? Over the top, Rioli in trouble, just got away. How about that? Not a good kick, Bolden picked it up well, made it look okay, Welsh kept his head, and now Lucas at centre half back. Lucas and Murphy's run clear in the middle of the dome. Out comes Hill, the kick comes up the full forward, bounces off his chest, but he did well to pick it up, flicks it up with one hand, Solomon in, Hill, Love it, Murray. Has kicked two, dribbles it forward. Dockers, though, got the numbers. Here's a chance again. McManus out wide at half back flank. Looks up. Nothing happening, though, for him. Oh, no one's got ready. Medhurst just on. Medhurst has come on, as Dermot said, off the boundary. Kicks it long to the hotspot. Simmons is the man. Flies from behind. Got the ball. Simmons flicks it out. Bell had to stop and wait. Got it high. And he'll get the free kick from 40 metres out. It's always going to be high on Peter Bell. Gee, yes. This it, is remarkable, isn't it? It is oh, absolutely Kelly. incredible. This guy would bring it to within 19 points. As Lou Richards would say, this is the biggest comeback since Lazarus. If they can get up from here. It hasn't even been a comeback. It's just been a gradual <laughs> this is wearing been, down. They've lulled them. Yes. This has been like Rope hypnosis. In comes Peter Bell. Oh, hit the post. That's needed to be a goal. Oh, it's a handy point, though. There's still time, Dim. <laughs> if they're good enough. Two behinds to Peter Bell tonight. The margin back to 24 points. Five minutes and 36, and uh, suddenly a four-goal win from here will be disappointing for the mm. Bombers. Oh, would it ever? Definitely. So, I was about to say a little early, take nothing away. They were superb in the first half. Um, you can only play against the opposition that, and the effort they put out there, but they would be disappointed with this. They've been beaten by five goals since half-time, mm. and it's not over yet. Longmuir has the ball at half-back flank for the Dockers. He's had a good second half, Longmuir. He's found Back a bit of the top. foot. He's taken some contested marks. That's what you see from what you want to see from your young big men. Played very well. Goes in short. This guy's been excellent. McPhee read it off the boot. Broke up that attack. Goes across the ground. Welsh. Nothing much on. And pull it back to the middle and Lucas thought about it. Decided against it. He's forward of half back. Goes close to the boundary line. That's a very good kick. Jason Johnson. Four and three quarter minutes from full time. Jason Johnson worked hard. Chips towards the 50. Clever mark. Over committed with Woods. Finished up on the ground. What is he doing? Nathan Murray kicks a goal. Love it, Murray. His third. So back to five goals, the margin, 17-12, plays 12-12. The Bombers will win tonight, no doubt about it. It's been a fantastic result. Set it up in the first half when they led by 54 points. They might put a bit of icing on the cake, although a nice mark by Dion Woods. Thumping kick out to the wing position, Hazelby. Kicks the centre half forward. Medhurst is there. Got his hands to it. McVeigh's been fantastic tonight. Might have found his spot, McVeigh. Heard kicks out wide. Johnson up high. Walker does well. Hazelby. Nice little handball off the bell. Pavlich. Thumping kick. Looking for Longmuir. Wrestling with Big Allen. Oh, Longmuir did well. So did Allen. He was holding on a bit long. Wellman. Out to James Hurd. So James looks up and kicks to Johnson, who has been very, very good tonight. Good mark by Mark Johnson. Kicked the goal as well as being very hard as always. Lucas to Fletcher. 
Fletcher comes wide out to Elvi, all on his own on the wing position. Elvi looks up. The lead comes from Lloyd, who kicked five goals to half time and hasn't had one in the second That's half. Parkers. And Parker will take the free kick. There you heard it. I'm over the shoulder. Free kick. That was it. Parker, Bell, Pavlich on the burst. Long down towards half forward, Fletcher. He looks a bit stiff. Yeah, he does. Yeah, they do look their best Fremantle when you find Pavlich on the burst somewhere through the midfield. He gives them pace and he's such a big unit coming forward. Lucas has been very good. 21 possessions, penetrating kick inside oh, the 50. That's a hold. Luke McFarlane had hold of the jumper before he went and marked the ball. Well picked up by the umpire. Yeah, uh -huh. to give it up. He hasn't had a great night. No, Luke McFarlane, right from the Luke, word go. We've got to play it. Because he's been led to the I've footy. Got to play it. No, no, no. From where I was, it's a clear jump of But he just got out muscled on that occasion in your almost desperation. Ended up grabbing the jumper of David Hill now. Uh, he is a very good kick for Val, but I don't reckon... They'll be having one eye, but looks like it. He's going having, on there. He won't be having the shot. I reckon he might just be off with the blood rule. Has he got blood? Oof, he's got a nice mouse above the eye there, isn't he? Jeez, Jeez. Wow. Gee, I reckon he... He can't see. <laughs> He's not giving it up, though. It's not funny. Kicking from 30. Oh, yeah. It's only swollen on. This is narrow. Yeah, so he aimed to the goals on the right that he was looking at. So the ones in the middle. <laughs> Dustin Fletcher coming oh, off. I'd be interested to get Doc Larkin's thoughts That's on that. come up quick, hasn't it? It's Guy came down on that. I tell you what, Parker, Parker's <laughs> been very good back on Lloyd, hasn't he? And it's gone down there. Brock, yes. he'd be asking Mickey to cut him. <laughs> Three Parker kicks, hits. Essendon 18, Frio 12 tonight. As the ball comes in to Cook. Pavlich. Out towards Simmons, just a push in the back. Yep, free kick there. Once again, Pavlich bursting through the middle. I wonder how David Hill's going to get that eye ring in at the end of the game tonight. That's probably what's needed, then. Yeah. One of the pressing questions. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is that time. And you're still thinking about those things, Doom. <laughs> uh, at the BT, will we see later on tonight, Doom? What's that? Where Doom and Paris Hilton catch up yeah, for a cafe don't latte. Don't even put me there. Lucas, out wide. Love it, Murray. McManus does well. Pushing it forward. Almost in the back, Solomon. Love it, Murray. Good play. Jason Johnson's been fantastic tonight to Rioli, who marks it half back. A minute and a half left in the game. It's going to be a good win of the Bombers. James Hurt back in form tonight after that eye injury. Oh, oh goes Lloyd! I think he, he's ended up giving it. He hasn't given it to Lloyd. He ended up giving it to Bolton. Kick it to Hill. We want to see his eye again. Get him up on camera. How long do it? Now they flood back to him to double team him now. Lloyd did all the work and well, Bolton stole the mark. Yeah, that did, a play. <laughs> did you see that? Headland goes forward. Great play by Wellman, one of the unsung heroes of this Essendon lineup. Allen in game 150. Solomon back to Wellman. Inside a minute left in the game as Wellman goes wide to Elvie for the last roll of the dice of this round 10 Friday night fixture. Over the top, McVeigh has run hard. You've got to say this last term, in fact, the last half, very oh. inconclusive. It really proves nothing. Here's Johnson. McPhee, ahead of Wells, too far ahead. Walker, who's played well in the second half, came across on the angle. Mercedes, or was it Johnson who dug it out? It was Johnson. Cook. Now Gilmore. In defence, Hazelby. Close to the boundary line, very close. In front was Medhurst, knocked away by McVeigh. Longmuir gave it to Gilmore to Walker. Backs out of trouble. We're down to 12 seconds. Little chip pass taken by Hayden. That first goal seems a long time ago now. McManus 55 metres out. Spot Simmons. Not the best kick in the world. Well done, Bolton. Moments ago was taking a spectacular mark on the forward line. Then running hard back in defence, conceding a behind. And the Bombers win their seventh game of the season. A morale sapper for Fremantle who came here thinking it was their best chance in a long time to beat one of the top sides. Well, it didn't turn out that way. Terrible start. Almost in keeping with the start they got against St Kilda a couple of weeks ago. That was in Perth, but tonight the Bombers...
started in sparkling form. They led by 54 points at halftime. It could have been a lot, lot more. And baby heard up in the stand there as well with Tanya. Let's go down to Dad himself. He's with Tony Jones. James Heard, welcome back. Thanks, Gary. I was just uh, clarifying as to whether, in fact, it was James on the receiving end of that talking to from uh, Kevin Sheedy, and it was. We'll get to that in a minute, Gaddy. But, uh, James, uh, you slipped back into things very nicely. Yeah, it was a good win for the boys. You know, last week was very disappointing, but we would like to kick on with it at half time, but we just let them back in the game. It's a bit disappointing. Yeah, a good win, but, uh, as you say, it could have been a better win and probably should have been a better win. Yeah, we need the percentage. You know, we got flogged in uh, Port Adelaide in round one, so... We need a percentage, and unfortunately, we didn't do it tonight. Well, uh, now, as I said, at three-quarter time, what was Sheeds' message to you? Because, uh, I mean, is he allowed to do that to you? Yeah, it's uh, just play more accountable, and, uh, you know, it's bad play on my behalf when my man gets too many kicks, and um, Sheeds just let me know about it, so it's fair enough. All right, good on you, James. Thanks, mate. Thanks very much, Tony. Happy James. They're there with Tony Jones. And there they are. Happy Essendon clan there. Then you heard on the right-hand side. And uh, Jeff Farmer. Comes off. He had a sore hand earlier in the game. Seems to have recovered from that okay. And a pretty good win tonight for the Bombers. It was a game that was built up. The pressure cooker, as Chris Conley and Kevin Sheedy said all week. Chris Conley, fantastic in his comments during the game and also in the build-up to the match. But he goes away knowing that his team has still got a bit of work to do. Kevin Sheedy's got the grumpy face on too. He's taken the head because they did lead by 54 points at halftime. The Bombers... Blew the game apart. They led by 18 at quarter time and then kicked seven goals three in that uh, second quarter to win the lead by 54 points. It was 22 scoring shots to eight. The Bombers were absolutely belting the Fremantle Dockers. But after half time, the Dockers actually won the match by four goals. It was 45 points at three quarter time. The game never in any real doubt. And at one stage, though, the uh, margin was 24 points and the Dockers were some sort of hope with about eight minutes to go, Dennis. But uh, as is the case, the Bombers just steadied and have won by 30 points, 17-13, 1-15 to 12-13-85. Lloyd kicked five goals to half-time and uh, he decided that was enough for him. He was probably starved of chances after that, Dennis, you'd have to say, but uh, a fantastic effort in the first half. He clearly set the game up. And Parker did a good job after half-time. Lloyd was yeah. terrific in the first half. And I think there's a real Jekyll and Hyde personality about the Bombers. Not the first time I've seen them stop running when they seem to think they've got a game under control. They're pretty good judges. They did have the game under control. But it got a little bit interesting there, about six minutes out from full-time. And suddenly they found the accelerator again and got a couple of valuable goals. James Heard generally involved when they need those goals. But... There was a casualness about their play in the second half when they didn't run hard enough. And when the Dockers found some space, that's when they looked their best. But when it was in tight, the Dockers were no match. Well, it'll be interesting to see here what happens. This might be a sign of the mood of the Bombers camp. Uh, looks pretty much it is. Uh, Alec Eppis there, one of the directors. No song after this game. Straight in. The coach wants to have a chat to him about proceedings, no doubt. The second half will be looked at far more than the first half during mm. the week at Windy Hill. They've got a big month ahead of them. Get out of the way, Pete Larkins. He's walking into the camera. He can't he help himself. He knew it was there. He knew it was on. <laughs> if only we could find the ball like he can find the camera, <laughs> Peter. I tell you what, we'd all be Brownlow medalists, wouldn't we? 17-13, 115.